Hi, I'm Joe Fitzgibbon. Thanks for tuning in to another legislative update. We are in the home stretch of the session as we approach the last month before adjournment and we're deep in our work on the state budget. One of the most important parts of my work here as a state representative is getting feedback from you, my constituents. And so this past week, Representative Cody and I held a telephone town hall to hear from as many of you as we could in a, in a relatively short time. I've got lots of great questions from, from folks about issues ranging from transit to taxes to gun control. And so this week's legislative update is a few of the highlights of, of that conversation. So please enjoy. Next we're going to talk to Elizabeth and Burian. Elizabeth has a question about gun control. Elizabeth, you're on the line. Hi. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to both of you for all your hard work. I am a resident of Burian, and my son goes to St. Francis, and I don't know if you heard, but there was a young eighth grader shot with, I guess, what now said at 22 caliber bullet walking home from school a couple of days ago. I understand that the state tried to pass a law, gun safety law, on maybe it was background checks and it wasn't able to get through and I just like to say that I really would like something to be done and wondered what was the next plan for this and what I can do as a citizen to encourage you guys to have some common sense gun safety laws. Thanks Elizabeth, that's a great question. Eileen and I were both strongly supportive of the bill that you're talking about, which would have required background checks for all sales of firearms. Currently, it's possible for people to get a gun at a gun show and not have a background check. And unfortunately, that's a loophole that a number of people who shouldn't have access to guns have used to get guns and then unfortunately go on and, and commit crimes. Unfortunately, there was not a majority support in the House of Representatives to, to pass that law this year. We worked really hard for a number of days, pretty much doing nothing else but work on that bill to try to see if we could get enough members to, to vote yes to, to move that bill on to the Senate, but we were not able to. And that was a huge disappointment. I'd say that's the biggest disappointment so far of, of the session for us. I do want to highlight one thing that we did do on, on firearm safety, which I think is a good step forward. It's not it's probably going to have quite the same impact as universal background checks, but we did pass a law that closed a different loophole in our firearms law that said that if you have a restraining order out against you or a protection order or a no contact order that you can't have access, that you can't you can't get a gun. So that's a, something that there was some specific tragedies that led to that legislation, and fortunately we were able to pass that out of the House. Now that's before the Senate. Next we're going to talk to Mark. Mark has a question on transit. Mark, you're on the line. Hi, this is Mark Lander now. I'm using a sign language interpreter. I am a man. It's a woman's voice. Very nice to talk with both of you again. I live in West Seattle. I work at the Lighthouse for the Blind. And my question regards transportation. I know that there's three bills that have been floating around for King County Metro, Pierce Transit, and for Community Transit. And I know that in all three areas they're looking at pretty serious budget deficits that are going to truly affect transportation for all of us, in particular for those of us with disabilities. And my understanding is for Metro in particular, a reauthorization is needed to enable the license tab fees to be continue to be collected after this next year. But anyway, the three bills I'm curious about the current status are House Bills 1898, 1953, and 1969. I'm wondering if either of you could comment on those. Sure, I can take that. Thank you, Mark, for that question. So. One thing that I think folks should realize is that the bus agencies in, in Pierce and Snohomish counties have already faced really devastating cuts. There's no longer any Sunday bus service in anywhere in Snohomish County. So if you're somebody in Linwood who took the bus to get to church uh, on Sunday, that's no longer an option. In Pierce County, they haven't gotten there yet, but probably later this year they're going to eliminate all bus service for Saturday and Sunday and all bus service after 7 p.m. in you know, Tacoma and Puyallup and therein. Luckily, we have managed to not see those kind of cuts so far in King County, and a big reason for that is that we passed legislation two years ago that gave King County a temporary funding option to help them preserve bus service during the past two years. That is about to run out. King County is, runs the biggest bus system in the state. About 60, 65% of transit riders are riding King County Metro in Washington State. And so it moves a ton of people. It's absolutely critical to our economy to get people in and out of downtown Seattle and to the airport and other big work sites. And it's critical, obviously, for people who can't afford a car or who, like Mark, aren't able to, to get around in a car. 
So we are working this year to find a permanent funding solution for King County Metro, as well as for Pierce Transit and Community Transit in Snohomish. All three of their situations are slightly different, just because of the geography of those counties and, and where the transit district covers. Um, so we're looking at a slightly different set of revenue tools for each of those three. We have not passed that bill out of the House yet because that's a bill that relates to money. It's not subject to the same cutoff as other bills. So we're going to be working right up until the last day of the session to make sure that King County Metro gets revenue that they need to, to keep buses running and to keep people getting where they need to go. We're going to talk to Brian. Brian has a question on the recent Supreme Court decision. Brian, you're on the line. Well, thank you. The question was touched on somewhat by an earlier questioner. It was about the Supreme Court decision and the elimination of the two-thirds requirement for tax increases and asked what, if any, additional tax reform bills might be considered, whether revenue or tax exemptions or other type of preferences eliminated will be considered this session or will be held over to the next session. That's a great question, Brian. Thank you. There's a whole variety of tax reform ideas that are likely to be considered this session. There were some temporary taxes that the legislature enacted in 2010, which are scheduled to expire later this year, and those are, one was a temporary increase in the business and occupation tax for certain service businesses from 1.5% to 1.8%. If we take no action, then that, that will go back down to 1.5%, and that, that's one idea that's been proposed that we would continue that increase permanently. And that would raise a couple hundred million dollars. That would make a pretty big dent in the problem. Uh, there's also a beer tax. There's an existing beer tax that, that was increased three years ago, and that raised, I think, about $80 million for the next two years. And so that's one idea that's being considered is that they continue the beer tax at that higher rate. Another idea that I think we'll get a lot of you know, we're always taking a look at tax loopholes to determine if, if those are performing or not performing. One that we think pretty clearly is not getting value for the taxpayers is called the extracted fuel exemption. It's about $68 million over two years, and it's almost entirely paid by the oil refineries. There's five oil refineries up north in the Bellingham and Accordis area, and they have this loophole for some of the fuels that they use in their processes. But if we close that loophole, there's a lot of support for doing that. That would get us about $68 million. Those are some of the ones that received a lot of discussion. I mentioned earlier the capital gains tax. That's again a tough political conversation here in Olympia, but I think it's one of the more innovative ideas for how we can balance the budget in a fair way. Thanks again for tuning in to this update. Um, if you didn't have a chance to get your question answered, I always welcome your calls and your emails and even a visit here at the State Capitol. If you'd like to hear the entire audio of the Telephone Town Hall with Representative Cody, you can go online to my website and listen to it there. Otherwise, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.